Bleep. You have to be relatively old to get that. Um, so I took some of the older rivet lock bulkos out of the storage and I ground it down a little shoulder on them and then added the power cord handles just to play around because otherwise I'd have to forge a whole bunch of new ones and test it and if you know but I think that I'm uh, on to something here um I like this flushness uh, originally what I was thinking of doing is actually just removing this and then moving the power cord all the way to there but then where do I put the rivet lock? And I don't particularly like having the sheath locking into the handle like this, right? Because what we see here, this is a CRKT. It's pretty badly abused that somebody broke the tip. But you see it says, thank you there. It says, thank you, uh, 2014. That was in Iwa, uh, 2014. I hung out with the guys at the Iwa booth, uh, at the... CRKT booth and just talked with them forever and they gave me this and uh, I would I, I carried it for like six years so you can see a lot of similarities between the Obake doesn't smell so bad anymore don't use paracord handled knives uh, to cut cheese so and you see with this mechanism they just have two notches that goes into the sheath right with a Rivet lock bulko. Look how streamlined this is compared to that. So the sheath is like as thick, as wide as the blade handle itself, which I think is nicer. If you if you don't want to carry the knife on you, you're heading out. You know, you got a backpack. You just slide this between a couple towels or something. You have your blade with you. You know, I think that. And or if you want to just slide it in your pocket. I'm going to, instead of making my own belt clips, I'm actually going to order a ton from AliExpress uh, and test those out. Um, but I think this way, just a little bit more playing around with it, maybe move the rivet lock a little bit further back so it's a bit more um, centered. And uh, I think this looks really good. And then have all the rivet lock goes like standard with that. Um, because that's, that's actually, like, it looks really nice when it's snug like this. So this was actually the second iteration. God damn. And this was the first one I did. So this was not as deep, those shoulders. But I think this knife actually looks a little bit better and cleaner. And actually feels tiny, tiny bit better in the hand. So it was just deep enough to take most of the layers down into the... Uh, most of the layers down into the handle just needs to be a little bit deeper. Granted, the next ones I forge, they'll have this in mind. I should have grounded another one before the video to show you what it looks like before I wrap the handle on. And even in that configuration, in the full steel, uh, full steel, it actually feels actually I think better than the rivet lock bulkos did before when when they when they weren't when they didn't have these shoulders grinded in for this paracord handle. Construction. So actually, personally, from what it feels like, at least for now, and I haven't actually tested um, the full steel, like for cutting wood and stuff, but so far, in terms of just handling it and having like in your hand and stuff like that, it feels better in every way. So it's a win 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 kind of situation uh, with doing that. Um, yeah, you can see one of the sort of negative sides of this kind of surface finish is that. Uh, if you're not careful, you can slide off some of that pattern. But I noticed that that only happens if I do these dimple marks, these forging dimple marks on the spine. It does something to the kydex where it makes it like much more difficult to pu pull in and out of the sheath. There's a lot more friction in there. So I actually stopped doing these uh, dimples because um, it just makes the operation so much smoother in and out of the sheath. And it actually also, for some reason, prevents a lot of the a lot of these scratches from forming. But either way, this feels really nice in the hand. I like this a lot. This is definitely the next ones I'm going to do. I'm going to keep that finger groove there because it actually it's it is really nice. The reason I wanted the power cord handle to go all the way is because when you're carving wood, it's nice to actually have it's nice not to have it exposed on spine. But if your knife is super sharp, that's not a big deal. 
Plus, you can always kind of like hold it back there or put your thumb there or something. So I will try a couple where the 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 power cord goes way further up and I'm going to and the idea was to have a much smaller rivet. So I'm going to try a really tiny rivet lock somewhere along where this kind of guard of choil area is and then just push the power cord even further up because you you can see that we can actually take kind of a, a you know there could be like a couple more knots here so but so far i'm very pleased with this kind of addition and i can change all of the rivet lock bulkers that i have on in storage here uh to this configuration i think i will do that um it just feels nice in the hand i mean but it's just you know for an edc that's like ultra stealthy and very very portable i think i think it's worth it um yeah this one this one's really nice too this was the second one i did where it was just a bit deeper actually now that i think about it, it kind of looks better the rivet lock being slightly forward there and not really centered with this i think is kind of what uh gets my eye off but Either way, like this one, this one has slightly uh, thicker metal, so the width of the handle came out a bit more. And this is this is really cool. I like this a lot. And there's another benefit to that too. When you have those kind of shoulders there, is that uh, you're much less likelier, of course, if you're hitting it really hard for the power cord to slide down. Generally, the way you avoid that is by tapering from here to there, and then because the knots are so tight. It's, you can't, that string doesn't expand over the metal, right? So by having it, by having the knots start from here and go like this, nothing will push forwards. And then having it tied it down like this here, properly at the back, that prevents anything from sliding back as well. So you, you continue all these knots all the way to the end, and then you loop that whatever is left of the string in and out, in and out, in and out to lock those last few knots into place and that basically prevents anything from sliding back um, you guys have seen some of you have seen the abuse tests on the rivet lock walk along this construction it just it doesn't break man it is tough it is tough 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 so yeah this is cool and i've got some ideas to produce like a 115 crv3 uh, version of the steel you can't cold forge it so but it's very high carbon kind of kitchen knife steel some kind of skinner that's nice and tall with like a bowie shaped blade and a and a handle that's similar to this i'd like to do more like wooden scales and stuff but it's uh i just prefer the power cord handle and then you can always change the power cord handle and stuff like that so i don't know we'll see i'll do a bit of both but Right now, I need to focus on custom orders and scalpels and these experiments. I think were really cool. So, yeah, I don't have these up for sale on my website. So, if you're interested in one of these, uh, just DM me on Instagram at hot underscore metal underscore knives. And of course, you can go to my website hotmetalknives.com to find scalpels. You see, this one's got a little bit of rust. These are really awesome. They're sold all over the world, and uh, with it, you can actually also uh, get some of these mini strop necklaces, and these go very well with with uh, with the uh, with the scalpels. And but they're also super easy for you to make. I mean, it's just a piece of wood and a piece of leather and a string, and you know some compound here. So I'll see you guys next time.